the schedule is I'm going to spend about 10 minutes uh, and give everybody just a quick update as to what's going on here at the School of Communications and then we're going to have some individual sessions. You can, all right, thank you. Appreciate it, Dick. There's been a lot going on at the School of Communications for the past two years uh, since we were last able to have one of these meetings. Uh, we've added uh, some new technology uh, into the school. Uh, we've added some new programs as well. We've added some new screens in our lobby. And what you can see in our lobby uh, when you walk in is this uh, excellent screen just welcoming people to the School of Communications. It's also got uh, announcements for students about important meetings or deadlines uh, for group events or for chances to talk to uh, alumni and people in the industry. We also opened the Quinnipiac Podcast Studio last year, and we now have about two dozen podcasts uh, operating out of the podcast studio. Uh, these are all podcasts that are either directed by a student, uh, engineered by a student, or uh, hosted by a student. We actually have some parents in the live studio audience uh, who have uh, their student uh, hosting a podcast. So thank you for joining us. We've also added an advisory uh, alumni board uh, in our lobby. And so this board is changing constantly as people walk by. You can see where some of our alumni are working throughout the country, and we really think this adds a really nice touch uh, for our students and for our visitors uh, when they're walking through our lobby. They can see where our alumni are now working, and we really uh, want to encourage uh, any alumni, uh, if you're not on the board, let us know, and we can definitely add you. We've also started something last year that I'm really proud of called Ability Media. And what Ability Media is, is a group of students who are producing content uh, related to the disability community. You're going to hear a lot more about Ability Media uh, with our first guest, Dave Stevens. He's our professional in residence who we've hired to run Ability Media. We've got about 10 students right now working on Ability Media, uh, but they're really focused on raising awareness of the fact that 26% of the U.S. population uh, identifies as having a disability, but the media community doesn't really uh, acknowledge them with content, uh, both in news and in film and TV shows, and we're trying to address that. We've added signage in a space around the agency. The agency is our full service uh, student run uh, agency uh, it's advertising, public relations, and graphic design students. And every semester they're working for uh, clients out in the real world, uh, producing PR campaigns, producing new logos, uh, really working with these clients uh, to work with them on communication strategies. Uh, past clients include everybody from uh, the Hartford Airport, Bradley International, uh, to Lego, uh, to the Snoopy Peanuts characters. We've also added a new video board around our students. And this video board shows where our students are interning. It shows their capstone projects that they've been working on in their classrooms, everything from their senior films uh, to senior journalism projects uh, to senior PR campaigns. Uh, we're really proud of this, and we really think that this really helps show uh, what our students are working on and the fact that they can hit the ground running when they graduate. We've got QUNLA back up and running. QUNLA is our program where our students can go spend a semester in Los Angeles. Uh, we've hired a new di uh, director of the QUNLA program, Andres Rosindi, who you're going to hear from just in just a little bit. Uh, we've got 26 students who have registered to go next semester, and these students will intern at studios, at production houses, at PR firms, really any type of internship uh, that they can find out in Los Angeles. They all live together 
uh, in uh, an apartment building in downtown LA that's extremely nice. Uh, and they do extracurricular events while they're out there. Students who are out there right now, for example, went to a Dodgers playoff game and they went to a recent taping of a TV show. Uh, this is one of our signature programs here at the school and we're really proud of the fact that we've gotten this back up and running uh, after the pandemic closed it down for a year. We've also got a bunch of new equipment in our, in our uh, facility. And what we're doing is trying to keep up to date uh, with the latest trends and the latest technology to make sure that our students are working with equipment that is really what is happening in the industry. So we're constantly updating our equipment uh, in our equipment room. If you're not familiar with our equipment room, it's where students can come check out cameras, tripods, mics, uh, even drones, anything that they need for a class project. Uh, they can uh, schedule a time uh, to come check out the equipment and use it for class projects. We're really excited about our open air studio. We are adding an open air studio in the Center for Communications and Engineering building in early 2022. Um, this is really, we think, a game changer for the School of Communications. It's going to give our students uh, the ability to work in a live studio set similar to what they would do out in the professional world, whether they're working with ESPN or a, a TV station or any type of news organization that goes live on a major event. This is gonna have the latest technology. It's going to have remote uh, cameras uh, that the control uh, student is going to be able to use. And it's really going to be set up nicely in our lobby with Sleeping Giant State Park in the background. So it's really gonna have uh, an incredible view as well. We think this is really going to attract uh, future students, but we also think it shows the commitment to our current students that we want to address what they need uh, for their jobs that they're looking at when they graduate. I wanna talk just a little bit about what the fundraising has been happening uh, going on at the school because we've got some interesting developments there as well. Uh, we've got an alumnus who works at Otis Elevator. He oversees their communications and this alumnus has recently uh, sponsored a scholarship uh, for a School of Communication student um, and in addition to the scholarship the student will also be mentored uh, by this alumnus. Uh, this is uh, for a uh, public relations or STRATCOM student. Uh, the Kramer family has recently uh, funded a scholarship that honors uh, the former New Haven Register editor, Jack Kramer. Uh, this will go to a student who is interested in print journalism, uh, but we're really excited about their uh, involvement here at Quinnipiac University. The scholarship was with the Quinnipiac, or the Connecticut Society of Professional Journalists, uh, but they decided that it would be better uh, if, it, if it was done at a university. I've been working this semester on some grant proposals and we've got two proposals uh, with, uh, currently out there with two foundations that we're very hopeful about. One is the Mitsubishi Foundation and one is the Knight Foundation. And then we've also been working on what I would call the School of Communications wish list uh, with our development people. And these are just things, uh, smaller gifts, smaller things that uh, uh, donors might be interested in giving uh, to the School of Comp. I want to talk just lastly before we start uh, with some talking about some individual things about what's happening academically uh, at the school as well because I'm really proud of how the faculty and the staff have looked at our curriculum, looked at what the careers of the 21st century are and really updated our curriculum and made some changes to what our curriculum is so that we're providing the best education for our students. I'm really proud that we've launched a master's program in cinematic production management. Uh, this is a program, uh, there's only one other like it in the entire country, uh, and this really gives our film students or anybody that's interested in the film or TV industry uh, a chance to learn how the business of film and TV is done. Uh, we've hired a new faculty member, Blythe Frank, who oversees this program. You're gonna hear from Blythe in just a minute. We're also working on a joint bachelor's program with the School of Business 
called talent management. And this major is for students who are interested in being a sports agent or an, an agent for an entertainer or a musician. It's also for students who might be interested in going into working on the business side of sports entertainment. For example, we have an alumnus who is the president of the Detroit Pistons, okay? He never took anything about sports or talent management or sports management when he was a student here. So that's the kind of thing that we think uh, is going to be really attractive to students going forward. We've also got a couple of new minors here in the School of Communications. Uh, we've got a minor in financial communications uh, that we think is going to be very attractive for both public relations and journalism students. Uh, these are for students who want uh, to go into corporate communications or investor relations for a company or for students who may want to go work at the Wall Street Journal or CNBC. It's a growing area in communications and we think that we are ideally suited uh, to offer this program given our location between New York and Boston. And then last but not least, we've started a minor in public diplomacy uh, with the College of Arts and Sciences uh, that we think is going to be very interesting uh, as well for students, particularly students who are interested in going abroad or working for the government uh, in some sort of diplomatic role. I'm going to pause now and see if there are any questions. Um, no, I'm hearing no questions from the studio audience. Okay then. Thank you, Dave. When we start doing all of this, yes, we will. Sorts, so yes, yes, we will. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I am going to turn uh, our program now to uh, Dave Stevens, who is our professional in residence. Uh, he is the person who is overseeing our ability media effort, and with him is Will Dean. Uh, will is a student here in the School of Communications who is working uh, with ability media. Dave and Will, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us, and uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, my name is Dave Stevens. Uh, as you can see, I'm in a wheelchair. Uh, I was born without legs, but I've been in television for 38 years. Uh, I worked 20 at ESPN, which brought me to Connecticut. I won seven Emmy Awards. Uh, and again, being born without legs, I also played college football and minor league baseball, and it really helped me to get this uh, reputation of being just a guy that was uh, in journalism despite beating the odds. And, and Chris uh, reached out to me and had this idea for Ability Media, and so we started something uh, a little over eight months ago. As you can see here, we've got a great new show that we just launched called Ability Media Now, and uh, it's by the students, run by the students, produced by the students here at the McMahon Center and giving those kids that opportunity to have a voice, uh, to tell the stories of those with physical and non-physical disabilities, ADHD, learning disabilities, all of those things that are unseen. And now we have that voice and thanks to the University of Quinnipiac, we can get kids involved to tell their own stories, to really wear those uh, uh, things that they've normally wanted to hide on their sleeves and be proud of who they are and to be that voice. And now that voice gives us this opportunity to have a show like Ability Media Now, where I had that opportunity to catch up with an old buddy of mine that I worked with at uh, ESPN. You might recognize Chris Berman. And it wasn't just the standard talk about sports and what he did. We talked about what it was like to work with somebody with a disability, which I was at ESPN. And, and, you know, this guy is one of the greatest voices and talents in the history of ESPN. And he just said it was, it was different. We did think about what your life was like and what you did going home and how you handled yourself. But I've been so blessed to be able to work in television and cover Super Bowls and do all these amazing things that now... I can give back to the University of Quinnipiac and to be able to have the students that are here that now get to experience those kind of things, not only you know here at the college, but getting them out into the field. And in fact, this summer, we had our very first two-week camp for students with disabilities and students with special needs and normal students as well. They came in, we had about 20 students that learned how to edit, learned how to do TV, learned how to do television production. And it gave them those opportunities to see something inside of them 
from a different perspective. And so a great two week session that we kind of had, you know, put together during COVID. But, you know, like I said, the students are getting involved now. And Will Dean, who you see on the screen right now, just went to New York. He covered Runway of Dreams. And Will, as we take a look at some of the footage and some of the statistics you put out there, what has this experience been like with you at Ability Media? Well, to put it in one word, it's been incredible. It's, you, and it's, it's just an unbelievable opportunity, to, but to expand. I mean, it's just coming in here, um, an able-bodied person, I, it, one might ask why exactly I'm involved, but I mean, as a person six foot two, I've always had a bit of a different, different perspective, you know. But and hey, I'm the short one, so I get that <laughs> perspective as well. Oh so. my goodness! Well, hey, I mean, you've never had, <laughs> never had to deal with a shower head that, uh, you hit, and none of them are built for tall people. But anyway, back to the meat of the issue. Um, it was, I mean, going out to Runway of Dreams was just an incredible thing. I mean, just seeing people express their true, beautiful self and uh, being able to spread that message is. Um, well, obviously, not many people have that opportunity to do that, and I'm in, uh, incredibly proud to be a part of it. I mean, there's just so many things, um, especially as a journalist, you don't realize uh, how narrow your worldview until you, is until you expand it. And I mean, it, just an incredible amount of, of unique uh, opportunities and, and things that went on at Runway of Dreams in particular. I mean, there were, I, mean, I've, I was fiddling with these buttons earlier. I mean, I don't know, it's, I have, stubby fingers so <laughs> not, not a great idea but they there's just so many room so much room for innovation and I'm happy to be able to add to ability media in any way I can and that's why it's so great that the School of Communications is giving us that voice this opportunity you know these students are going to go out in the field with my background and everything we're getting them out we just shot another story up at Yale uh, and we want you guys to support us. We need you to guys to follow us on social media, to go to uh, abilitymediagroup.com. We need that support because we're not just looking for money, we're looking for the stories. We want to create the next Dave Stevens to get out there and to be able to be in television, to have that confidence to be on air. We've got amazing anchors like Grace McGuire and Alina Galan and all these people behind the scenes and in front of the scenes that uh, are telling these stories. And uh, Will, as we wrap up, I'm just curious if uh, this has changed your perspective, if it's reinvigorated you, because you know, you've got to see the Ability Media now. Once it's going to be posted soon, go and watch his stories, you know, telling these stories but has it reinvigorated you? Has it changed you? I mean, do you, you suddenly you've got this big zest to work with us. Well, absolutely. I wouldn't say it's uh, changed in any particular way, but I've, I would say that it's kind of launched me into the career, the world of journalism. I mean, you know, high school has its own uh, issues with getting out and covering events. College, um, second semester, I mean, as everyone knows, that's why we're wearing the masks here, but I was, I was incredibly happy to be able to get out into the, the real world and start covering issues. And, you know, I, so to, to answer that question, it, was, it wouldn't say reinvigorated, it invigorated the first time. Uh, and so that's, that's what I would have to say. Oh, thanks, Will. I mean, thank you for being a part of this. You're seeing Alina Galan again, another one of our amazing uh, grads who has come back to be a part of Ability Media. So, you know, yes, we need funding, but we also need your support. And if you have a great story, if you know of somebody that has a disability that's overcome something, or a friend of a friend or a family member or anything, let us know so we can at least get it out there. Or if you've got a great story, uh, send it to us. Chris, we try to get these things out there again to educate the world. What we're trying to do is teach people to have empathy and not sympathy. So thank you guys for your time. Don't forget to uh, follow us on all of our social media platforms. And again, thank you for this opportunity. And the best of luck the rest of the way for you guys out there watching. Thanks, Dave and Will. We really appreciate that update on Ability Media. So uh, what they were talking about in terms of the funding, uh, those are the grants uh, that I mentioned earlier that we've uh, applied for with the Mitsubishi Foundation and, the, and the, um, uh, the Knight Foundation. We really think that we can make Ability Media uh, a national platform uh, for disability coverage. Um, and we've gotten interest from other universities uh, who want to partner with us. I'm now going to turn it over to our new faculty member, Blythe Frank. Uh, Blythe is a new faculty member in the television, or the film, television, and media arts department. She is also director of the new Cinematic Production Management Master's program. She comes to us with a very distinguished career uh, in the movie industry. Uh, she was also uh, teaching part-time at Columbia University in New York. 
and she's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, what the Cinematic Production Management Program uh, is all about. Blythe?
Thank you so much, Christine and Blythe. We really appreciate uh, you spending time with us. We're going to now introduce you to another new faculty member, Sarah Silver. Sarah is our new Abelson Chair in Business Journalism and Financial Communications. She comes to us this semester after a distinguished career working for the Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times, the Associated Press. And she is in charge of the new minor in financial communications, which we really think has a lot of great potential and can really serve our students well when they're out looking for jobs. She is going to give you a short presentation about the financial communications program. And she also has a student with her, Emily Flamme. Sarah? Thanks so much. Can. No. All right, I'll keep talking. Um, the <laughs> idea of I can share it. There's a business angle to every story, um, whether it's
Yeah, so uh, I am a journalism major. Thank you, Emily, so much. We really appreciate that. Of course. We are now going to move to Andres Rusindi. Andres is our new QUNLA director, and he's going to tell you about what we're doing out in Los Angeles and what our plans are for the future. Andres?
can still hear you. I, th I think we need to, to, to move on, but thank you, Andres. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you so much. And, and I wish I was in L.A. with you right now. <laughs> uh, we're now going uh, to meet uh, Lila Carney. Lila is our Director of Career Services, 
here at the School of Communication. She helps students find internships. She helps students find jobs. She works with them on their resumes. We've had a lot of alumni involvement uh, with mentoring uh, of our students through Lila's office, but I know the parents who are here uh, are also interested in, in what's going on there because they want their students to get jobs. So Lila is here with Ashley Shankar, who is a public relations student uh, at the school as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Lila, Lila and Ashley. Hi everyone, so many familiar names and faces on the call today. And as you guys all know, I live, eat and breathe career. You have probably gotten many emails from me. So instead of me droning on, I made Ashley come here today. I told her she's my star today because I want you to hear a little bit about career from the student perspective. So, um, so do you want, just why don't you start by telling them kind of how you got those career wheels turning as you're kind of that freshman, sophomore here, because P.S. Ashley is graduating this semester. So, um, so if you can think back to how you kind of got those career wheels turning and what you did to kind of get started thinking about jobs and careers. Okay, uh, definitely the class comm uh, 101 helped me think about my career and how it'll be at the end of my school years as a freshman. Uh, I remember taking that class and going into um, CC 101, like sitting there with all the comm freshmen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember they had a lot of guest speakers, like the alumni, um, like any other professionals and everything, and learning about their experience and like how they were able to get their jobs or the things that they say that are pretty good for them to be able to get the jobs. So I remember uh, that really sticking with me and thinking mm -hmm. like, I hope I can be like them one day after I graduate. And then I also remember taking Com 201, and that really helped me prepare for like um, getting a job in my research, uh, my internship um, searches because for to graduate I need the internship. And in Com 201, I was able to build my resume like more professionally because I just had like a high school job on there. And then um, I learned how to write cover letters, and uh, I made my LinkedIn, which was really important now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's been really important. Um, and so you also ha were involved in student organizations as well to help build your your resume? Yeah, I joined the big event and I was on the uh, public relations committee for them, which was really fun and I got to meet a lot of people who are interested in the same thing as me. And then I'm just a part of the uh, Black Student Union as well as the South Asian Society. Nice. And so Ashley is not somebody who just did one internship and was like, check, I'm done. So tell us about your plethora of internships you've done. Yeah. So my first internship that I was able to, well, actually, I wanted to start off with um, all three of my internships. I was able to get off the TUCC website. I didn't like only try to apply there. I applied to other places, but it turned out like I was lucky enough to get it from there. And my first experience was um, at Cheshire Academy, which is like a boarding school here in Connecticut. And I was pretty much their student activities and advan uh, events uh, intern. And so I helped plan a lot of the events for students who were staying there for the weekend. And that was during the pandemic, so it was a little difficult to find stuff, but it was a good challenge. And then my second experience was a with the Special Olympics of Connecticut, and I was able to um, worked directly under the communications director and pretty much just helped her with everything she needed. So I wrote press releases, newsletters, um, or social media, uh, really anything she just would hand it right off to me. So mm -hmm. that was really cool. And then I also got to work with an athlete at the time. His name was Ryan. And we worked on an inclusion campaign. So that was really um, awesome to be able to actually work one-on-one -on -one with an athlete. And so currently I'm interning with a local blogger from Wallingford, the Caitlin Houston blog. Um, and for her, I'm mostly right now doing a lot of her social media posts and helping her with her blog posts as well. Um, she's expecting, she's pregnant right now, so she's expecting her baby. And so she's been able to hand that off to me as well. So that's really awesome. So are you ready <laughs> to get out there? Yeah, I definitely think I am ready. Um, I have been trying to apply to positions now and like, uh, I know my resume, I worked with you for mm -hmm. a lot of times, so 
Uh, I know my resume is good and really just getting out there for the interviews is my next step. <laughs> so one of the things that I had introduced Ashley to, and Mike, you can run that first video on the uh, Quincia resume analysis. So we, I'm a big fan of technology and all the ways that we can optimize our students' materials to get them the interviews and get them in front of employers. So we're, we have this tool called Quincia, funny enough, it's Quinnipiac and Quincia. Um, I asked for a discount. They said no. Um, but this tool particularly analyzes their resumes to make them applicant tracking system optimized. Because as you all know, we are applying to computers these days. And so this particular tool helps the students create resumes that can get through to a human that can hopefully review their resume and say, this is the perfect person. Let's bring them in for an interview. So um, what did you think of Quincia? Because you used it. Yeah, I think it's really good. I know like my first one, I had a lot of formatting issues, which I mean, I wouldn't have known otherwise. Mm -hmm. So I I went back and um, fixed it all up and then I ran it through again and it gave me a higher score so I was really happy about that and I've just been like fixing the little like the grammar or anything like that they say on there mm -hmm. and I also have a lot of like friends who are seniors as well right now who are trying to build their resume and they're coming to me because I know I'm going through everything to try to get a job uh, once I graduate and they're like oh like what did you do for your resume I'm like oh you guys need to see Lila like she she'll tell you about Quincia and like how you should put your resume through it and I'm like um, it's really helpful and if you need any tips like let me know but it's definitely mm -hmm. the go-to for me and they're like oh yeah I'll have to try it. <laughs> good, good, yeah. good. Quincia also has this really cool AI interviewing tool. We're using it with all of our students taking our media career development course. And so it's really cool. It, they, the students can schedule the interview. It is a computer that interviews them and asks them customized questions based on their resume and gives them all this awesome feedback. Um, anything from filler words to eye contact, micro expressions. It, I think it's just really cool. And because a lot of times the students will do interviews, but they won't necessarily necessarily know how the computer is reading them. And so this gives them an opportunity to at least see how a computer is analyzing their interview stuff. And so in career development, you know, I could go on and on all day about this, but I did want to tell you a couple other things that we're doing. We have done um, alumni and employer office hours. Mike, I have a little slide on that, um, where I have reached out to quite a few of you to ask you to give me an hour or two of your time to meet with students one-on-one. -on -one. I really am I'm a believer in the power of our alumni network um, and connecting our students with our alums and our, they love these one, these opportunities to have these one-on-one -on -one meetings with our alums. So these are some of the more recent ones and ones that are coming up, um, I think next week or the week after. So if you are interested, well, you know, I'll get to that in a second. Um, the other thing that I have going on is our mentor program. So this semester I have um, 32 alums and 32 students um, that are involved in a formal mentorship program that goes from October until March. So um, I am, you know, the students are just loving it. The students really enjoy connecting with an alum, a mentor, somebody that they can kind of have that sustained relationship with. So alumni, this is, I need you. So Mike, I think my next slide is how you could get involved. So the first thing you can do is get on Bobcat Connect. That is where our alumni can connect with each other, where our students can connect with our alumni. So it's bobcatconnect.qu.edu. If you are willing to give me an hour or two of your time, I will put you to work for our alumni office hours. Um, and really, the, the, one of the most important things that you guys do is sharing internships and jobs with me. It's lcarney at qu.edu. Um, please send me what you got. I, I share it out, whether it's a job that needs to go to other alums, whether it's an internship, I get it out to our students. And then don't forget, we are here to support you too. I meet with alums. We have a director of alumni career development. She is amazing. Um, so we're here to support you as well. So that's career development in a nutshell. Chris, take it away. Thank you so much, Lila and Ashley. I really appreciate that. We've got our last presentation. You've you heard inadvertently from him earlier. Uh, Dave DeRoche is our uh, director of our podcast studio. He is coming to us live from our podcast studio uh, with one of the students who works in the podcast studio. Dave, take it away.
Um, if not, I can just say, you know, what we're looking for really is to just expand what we're doing. Um, you know, with you saying going out and doing interviewing people. Uh, I think that pretty much sums it up. All right. Thank you so much, Dave, and thank you, Renette, for for that uh, great description of what's got going on in the podcast studio. If you weren't aware, Renette came to us from Zimbabwe, uh, so she's one of our international students, and she really has set the ground running. We are going to end this show with a roundtable discussion with some of our student leaders. We have six. Uh, students joining us now. Uh, they are all presidents of student organizations. I'm going to ask them quickly uh, to uh, tell us about who they are, what they're majoring in, and what their student organization is, and then we're going to do a lightning round of questions. So Victoria, let's start with you, and then we're going to come this way. Okay, uh, so I am Victoria Lorenz. Uh, I'm actually the treasurer for AIGA. Our presidents are very, very busy people. <laughs> Tell them what AIGA is. Um, so AIGA is the American Institute of Graphic Arts. Um, uh, sh should I address this to our fellow presidents? No. To, okay. <laughs> um, so AIGA is the American Institute of Graphic Arts, and it's a nationwide thing, but we have the Quinnipiac chapter of it. And basically, we assist Quinnipiac students in sort of delving further into their graphic design interests that they might not be able to pursue in class. Um, it's a great community for people to talk about design outside of the classroom, get more hands-on experience, and really just learn about other facets of design that fall outside of classroom experience. Thank you. Jack? Hello, everybody. My name is Jack Main. I'm a senior journalism major, and I am the general manager president of 98.1 WQAQ, which is our student-run radio station on campus. A lot like what 
the previous organization does is we offer students an opportunity to get their voice onto the live radio and talk about whatever they want for an hour of just like unstructured time. So whether or not you want to play tunes for an hour, if you want to talk about sports, if you want to talk about politics, entertainment, gossip, or even your favorite foods from the rat, it's okay. You can do all that uh, unsolicited on our on our airwaves as long as it's all FCC regulated, of course. And then we also give uh, an opportunity for students to share and promote their platforms on Spotify, iTunes, uh, and wherever else you can get podcasts. So. Uh, we give just students an opportunity to do that outside of the classroom, gives them weekly reps, and it helps in all of the organizations that the students run. Thanks, Jack. Joe? Hey, everybody. I'm Joe Legrippo. I am a senior journalism major, and I am the president of Q30 Television. We are Quinnipiac student-run television. We have three different departments. We have sports, entertainment, and news. You have an opportunity to go on air. Uh, we have five different shows throughout the three departments, uh, obviously practicing your, your on-air talent, uh, and then also behind the scenes. We have TriCasters, we have audio boards, we have teleprompters. So uh, there's a lot of different experiences you can get on live television. But not only are we the television station, but we also have beat reporters in all three departments as well, uh, as well as a, a, a written section on our website uh, for journalism majors as well. Thanks, Jared. Ross? Yeah, so I'm Ross Meglin. I'm the chairman of the Quinnipiac Bobcat Sports Network, QBSN for short. Um, we are the game day operation, basically, for covering Quinnipiac sports. We have broadcasters, social media coverage, writing, and um, we offer a bi-semester magazine, which our first one just came out today, which is very exciting. Um, and we're also working on a podcast, which is brand new for QBSN. So. We offer a ton of different aspects of sports coverage. You can get um, interviewing coaches and players as broadcasters, writers, and as social media, as I mentioned. So it's a real first-hand experience in game coverage that we offer for every single D1 sport. So you can cover anything you want to. And it's, uh, it ranges to even ESPN coverage this year. So we're branching out and growing to the absolute highest levels of broadcasting. Thanks. Kelly? Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm a senior public relations major, and I'm the president of Quinnipiac Star Chapter of Public Relations Student Society of America. Uh, so that is like a national organization, and you can connect with professionals who are part of Public Relations Society of America. It's a great opportunity for um, internships, networking, scholarships, conferences, a bunch of stuff. Um, in this semester, we're reviving Quinnipiar which is our on-campus pro bono PR firm that works with like uh, nonprofits and local small businesses. Thank you, Kelly. Last but not least, Michael. Hi, I'm uh, Michael Sicoli. I'm the editor-in-chief of the Quinnipiac Chronicle here. That's the student-run newspaper. So <coughs> what we do, we put out a paper every single week that spans pretty much everything you could think of, uh, from news on campus to opinions about worldviews or about campus, arts and life, where it's a little bit more culture-based and sports where we do at least some of what QBSN tries to do and do that a little bit more too. Uh, but in the last couple of years, we've also expanded to include a newsletter every week, to include a podcast, which we have two of, one of which goes over the stories and also uh, and also talks about you know what's going on around campus. So I think we've done a good job of you know expanding that and giving people what they want. Thank you. All right. Lightning round. Why did you get involved in your organization? Anybody? It helped me prepare for what uh, the real world could be and uh, really helps you get those reps. I wanted to be on TV uh, when I first came into school, but actually getting the reps in front of a camera made me realize, hey, I might not want to do this for a living, but instead I want to be behind the camera, which is something I didn't get uh, until I joined Q30. Okay. I know something I said when I came to college was that I was going to do whatever scared me. Um, so doing it, getting involved in a club immediately, uh, talking to people on the street, you know, doing more interview type of stuff. I was a very introverted kid, so expanding my horizons and taking a leadership role was something I never thought I could do, but I'm very glad I did. One of the big selling points to this university compared to other school of communications 
was the ability to get hands-on opportunities from the first day that you're on campus. I walked up to the WQAQ involvement table at the involvement fair. Uh, Dan Ball was uh, running this station at the time and he said, once a week, you can talk about whatever you want. And I was like, I can, I can do that. You know, I'm, I'm great at talking. I'm not so great at other things, but if I can talk, then I, can, then I will be happy. Uh, it also helps me along the way. I'm also part of Q30. I'm also part of QBSN. And the repetitions that I get on radio will help me with all the qualities that you need to be a good broadcaster for Q30 and a great broadcaster for the Quinnipiac Bobcat Sports Network as well. So they all, everyone kind of helps each other out, kind of, you know, has a helping hand in making sure that every other organization is also running as smoothly as possible. Yeah, I could add to that. I mean, I joined QBSN and they said they just reward hard work. They don't reward the seniors. They reward people who put in the time and grind and um, they respect that. And I'm someone who likes to work hard and I have worked my way up obviously to this position, but um, it's just refreshing that there's, there's, there's typically a stigma that you have to be a senior to get on air in any one of our organizations. And here at Quinnipiac, that is not the case in any organization. And I noticed that from day one and I respected that a lot. So it made me stick with it. Um, I joined AIGA because I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a graphic design major. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to major in and I thought the best way to kind of figure out why other students like it and why I might want to choose that as my career path is by joining the club so I could learn more. Um, and I did learn more and I fell in love with it and I still love it and now I get to share that with other students and it's amazing. Kelly, did you know you wanted to be in PR when you came to Quinnipiac? I didn't and that's kind of part of it. I took the 101 class and that's kind of where my interest started so then I joined PRSSA and I had originally joined it to like learn more from other Quinnipiac students, but then realizing like the national connections that it has and all the networking and conferences and stuff, I just learned way more about like the PR field in general because I came in knowing nothing about it. All right, thank you. Uh, we're gonna break for just a minute. We have a video from the head of the Quinnipiac Film Society who could not join us today because he's actually in class. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ben Labadia, and I'm the president of the Quinnipiac Film Society. Um, I couldn't make it there today, but I just wanted to make a video kind of updating you a little bit about what we've been doing in QFS. <coughs> Last year, because of COVID, which, and it was completely remote and all online, which wasn't great for film majors, um, I've barely been trying to make it more of an enriching experience for the students, and so I've been doing a lot more work, um, implementing a lot more activities, um, and I created mini productions, which are a thing that we do bi-weekly where one week we will do pre-production on a script um, and break everyone up into smaller groups and then the next week we'll do production on that script so we can really get the students to make things with other people, get to work on roles that they really want to do and make some great things for their reels. Um, we also do the fall and spring production where we have everybody in the club work on a film um, and we get a little budget from the, from the school so that's great. And we are also planning a trip to Sundance. Um, me and my vice president have planned it. We've already booked everything um, and we're set to go, 25 of us, and we're really excited for that as well. Um, so we've just been doing a lot of work, a lot of work to really build up this club, make it a great experience for the students. And I'm really happy with where it is and I'm, I'm excited to see what we do in the future. Thanks, Ben. Just one other thing about the, um, the film students. Next weekend, we'll be having our 24-hour film challenge here at the School of Communications. Uh, it's actually gonna be 24, 25 hours because of daylight savings time, but it's where our students get together and uh, within 24 or 25 hours, produce a short film, uh, and then they get critiqued, and the winning team wins $1,000, second place gets 500, third place gets 250. Back to the panel. If you had a student coming to you today, what would you tell them about why they should get involved in a student organization? Maybe not just yours, but any student organization. The number one thing I always say about that is that there's only so much a class can teach you. Um, you know, it, it's obviously good to be in those classes and you learn a lot of important things in those classes, but it's what you learn from those, from the classroom that you can actually incorporate into your work outside of the classroom and build a reel for companies if you're trying to 
um, you know, apply for a job outside. So um, it's it's stuff that you can't learn in a class that at least our organizations can uh, can definitely you know help you learn for the real world. The other thing is is like even if you don't get involved with student media uh, and you want to pursue another passion uh, or another club. It's you get five classes, six classes uh, a week that you get to attend to, and then you have all this time uh, throughout the day that you just have no idea what to do with. And joining an organization uh, gives you an opportunity to fill that time. And uh, when you come to college, what you put in is what you get out. And yeah, you should do your classes and you should do well in your classes. But for any student who's going into communications and they really should get involved with any number of our organizations because it does, like Joe said, it aids you in helping you get internships, which turns into jobs, which turns into connections, and helps you move up that ladder uh, for a long-lasting, successful career. So put into it what you want to get out of it, and for a lot of us, that was becoming the heads of our organizations. Uh, and not my wildest dreams that I think I'd be sitting here on a Friday afternoon talking to prospective <laughs> students, but it can happen, and as clear by all of us sitting right here. All right, last question, because we're almost out of time. I'm gonna start with Victoria, and I wanna come down. What do you wanna do post-graduation, and how is Quinnipiac helping you achieve that? Okay, um, so you and I, Dean Rausch, actually had a conversation about this the other day. Um, Quinnipiac has provided me with a lot of resources and a lot of opportunities, which, oh, I could do a lot of things after graduation. Um, I'm getting my master's degree after my undergraduate degree, um, which I'll be getting in the spring. So that's the first thing I'm doing after graduation. Um, but in terms of jobs, I'd really like to work at an agency so that I can do all kinds of design for different clients. Um, and Quinnipiac has really prepared me for that by being in the organizations because we work with so many people. Jack? I want to be a multimedia journalist in the New England area, and if I can, center it around sports some way, somehow, that would be the, all, uh, the all-time dream. Uh, and just because I am a ra the radio president doesn't mean that I also have dreams of showing my face somewhere, somehow, <laughs> so. <laughs> Joe? Yeah, joining Q30 has given me the opportunity to be a beat reporter, an associate producer, an executive producer, now president, uh, while I loved every single minute of my experience at Q30, I really fell in love with my time in production. Uh, so after school, I really want to get into you know television production uh, behind the scenes and and you know making graphics and making B-roll is something that I love to do and uh, I want to do that for a living. Ross. Yeah, so coming into Quinnipiac, I wanted to be a sports broadcaster, and through my time, I still want to be a sports broadcaster. That would be the absolute dream to be the Joe Buck, the Jim Nance of types people. That would be the all-time dream. Um, so nothing's really changed, and I think my time here at QBSN has only made my dream more intense. I want to do it even that much more. So um, the organizations, the classrooms have only prepared me um, for that extremely well, so I'm really ready to get out in the real world and start the dream. All right, Kelly? I'm leaning more towards um, more of the events side of public relations, and so being a part of any student org, I feel like you will get some type of event experience. Um, it'll be interesting this year as president being more of like the leader of that. Um, and then also, I think, I think every major in School of Calm is required to do an internship for credit, and so my internship right now is at an events company, so that's really helped me get my foot in the door and learn more about it to see if, like, after graduation, that's what I'm going to continue to do. And, and has the internship verified your thoughts, or? Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Michael. Yeah, I came in expecting to be sports journalist. That's what I want to do right off the bat. Uh, I actually went to a QBSM meeting for the first time uh, before I went to a Chronicle meeting, and. I ended up falling in love with editorials and just telling people exactly what I thought would piss me off on a given week. Um, and now I've just really, I've expanded my horizons. I, I think I could do anything post-grad and it's a testament to what my teachers have given me, it's a testament to what the Chronicles have given me. And I'm just really excited to see what could come next. All right. I want to thank our student panel uh, for joining us. Uh, I want to thank uh, our live studio audience uh, of parents, uh, alumni who are uh, and parents who are uh, listening in on Zoom. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for this great update uh, about what's going on in the School of Communications. Uh, as the Dean, I am always available to you. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me. 
If you uh, are interested, uh, we actually have a speaker uh, at two o'clock today on campus, Eric Garcia, who's a journalist from Washington. Uh, he'll be joining us and talking to us about his new book, about what it's like to be autistic and what it's like to cover politics in DC. Uh, that is also available on Zoom uh, if you're interested, but we will also be in person. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you got a lot out of the program and I hope you've learned uh, about what we're doing here at the School of Communications. Thank you so much.